Hey Rev, my name is Jason and I serve with our Stephen Ministry Care Team. And today I'm going to be talking about fear. And, you know, in our lives we have so many things that we might be afraid of um, from those very natural fears like the fear of heights or never ever watching arachnophobia again. Uh, it's a very subtle or kind of a, a more deeply rooted fear. Um, maybe it's the fear of wasting your life or, or becoming sick. And, and certainly while there are some you know, very, very natural, innocent fears, there are also these fears that um, kind of point to a more fundamental uh, thing that you're, you're working through. And so, you know, especially now uh, in our current state, just the amount of tragedy and pain and, and death that seems pervasive and, and just kind of everywhere, um, there's all these kinds of fears that we might be facing on a day-to-day -day basis that while we might have thought of them before or are worried about them here and there, they weren't necessarily so much uh, kind of in our face as much as they are today. And, you know, sometimes fear can be very confusing. Uh, it can be misleading too in that um, something you might be thinking about or dwelling on a lot um, if you are to kind of dig into that fear and, and ask yourself why, why am I feeling this fear uh, that you might get to um, something that isn't quite so obvious, so something that you might be thinking about uh, becoming ill uh, or becoming sick and uh, as you kind of dig into the why behind that there's the obvious reasons why we're afraid to become ill or uh, to be in danger um, but also kind of digging into um, is there something going on where we're maybe not um, fully sure of our faith and just kind of that lack of um, confidence in in kind of our, our eternal fate and so you know not every fear is this really really deeply you know seven levels deep uh, type of fear but uh, by asking yourself some of those honest honest questions about the fear that you're feeling uh, you can start to uh, you know approach scripture and approach your time uh, in prayer with the Lord um, kind of knowing what you're you're facing and so you know as Christ followers we have to ask ourselves you know what does the, the scripture say about fear should we have fear at all should we be fearless should we uh, have certain types of fear but not other types of fear and and of course then what do we do about it if we do have fear or when we have fear and you know so scripture talks a lot about uh, different types of fears you know fear that manifests itself uh, maybe in a lack of courage or just timidity, especially when you're faced with opposition or shame or guilt. Um, there's the fear of persecution and, and really just the fear of physical harm. Um, but there's also this a lot of uh, scripture that centers around the fear of uncertainty. And whether it be in situations that uh, those in the word are facing um, or the fear of not knowing, like I mentioned, what your eternal uh, salvation is, is rooted in. And kind of at the heart of these fears as you kind of dig into the word uh, is, is the lack of trust in God and a lack of love for God. And, you know, it, which kind of brings us to the, the scripture that we're going to go through today in 1 John. And 1 John was written uh, to believers and it was written to believers that were living in a time where they were facing a lot of false teaching and kind of false beliefs and living in that space and that culture, uh, they're also, you know, uh, not sure of their faith. Like what are, what should they be believing in? And the author, John, was trying to give them this assurance and this confidence that they can have. And so as I'm reading through this, this chapter in first, first John, um, and it's a little bit longer section of, of scripture, but just kind of be listening for uh, what's true about God, uh, his character and his attributes. Uh, just be listening for uh, maybe even the order that things are coming in. So as a command is given, what led to that command uh, to, for instance, love your brother and sister? Uh, kind of listening for uh, the keywords that would necessitate that command. 
And so, yeah, in 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God and God remains in him. In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love, yet, I love God and yet hates his brother or sister. He is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother, or sis, brother and sister. So let's go back to those questions that I posed before uh, the scripture about what, what did it say about God, about his his attributes and what's true about him. And it said that, that God is love, that, that he loved us first, uh, that God remains in him who remains in love. And it also says that, you know, God's love is revealed to us when he sent his son to live with us and to atone for our sins. And so as it relates to fear, uh, what did we hear? Uh, we heard there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear. And as the one that, that fears is not complete in love or is not made perfect in love is another way of, of saying it. And so we know that there is no fear in love and that God is love. But what does that mean for us and, and how does the presence of love displace fear? Well, in, in verse 15 it says, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God God remains in him, and he in God. And so, if we know that God is love, and that love drives out fear, and that those that remain in love, he will remain in, we can be confident that as followers of Jesus, that we can be free of fear. That love, that God is love, that he is inside us, that, and, and where that love is, fear cannot be. And, and so John, he doesn't stop there. Um, you know, he opens and closes this section with that same command that we should love one another. Um, and, it, and it's not through our uh, just sheer will or our ability to love, uh, but it's through the spirit, the, the advocate that Jesus said that he would send to us. Um, it's by his power and through his love that we're able to love those around us. And, and in this way, we show you know, the manifestation of the love that the Father showed to us by sending his Son um, when we extend that same love to those around us. And so, and again, you know, this is the way that the listeners of this letter would have known that they have the assurance that in the face of uh, whatever false teaching or fear that they might be having, that they can have assurance that no matter what happens, that they have God that's with them always, that they can be confident that they do know him. Um, and again, it's not through their own ability or their own uh, effort, but only because of the love that God showed for us. And so 
you know, while we continue to face situations or realities that provoke fear and just that the punishment that comes along with sin, uh, let's just all cling to the truth of the word of, of God that uh, just as Noel uh, said this past weekend, that we can have the courage to um, turn to the word and let that uh, be our source of courage and our source of strength and the reason why uh, we can live without fear. And we can have the confidence that through the living God, who is himself love, that he remains in us and through his son, uh, we can know him and, and know that his perfect love drives out fear.